Hello everybody and welcome to this. This is the third video in my series all about John Finnis's adaptation of natural law as can be found in the WJEC A-level RE specification under the ethics section. So far in this series what we've learned is that John Finnis's approach to ethics was an attempt to be a practical solution to ethical questions. He proposed that there were seven basic goods, seven principles which we should all be pursuing. Any action which pursues a basic good is a good action, and any action which harms a basic good is therefore a bad action. We work these out, says Finnis, by using the nine requirements of practical reason. Nine ways in which we can make good moral decisions. So, if we have these good moral decisions that we can reason and work out for ourselves, why is it that we need laws? Why do we have authority and why are there rules for us to follow? So join me today as we sit in my garage to discuss these important questions about John Finnis's approach to natural law. Finnis says that the principles to be found in the basic goods and the nine requirements are what he refers as self-evident. Everybody can work them out for themselves. We don't need to be told what they are. Nobody needs to say you must do this. Yet Finnis still argues that laws are important in a society. So despite the fact that everything is you know, equally applied, whether you be prince or pauper, to coin a phrase, you still need to follow certain sets of rules which are imposed you know, by the state or by authority. And why is that? Why does Finnis say these laws exist? Well, the principal reason is all about the common good. Human beings live in societies. We all have to interact with other people and we all need to look, find a positive way in which to do that. One of the reasons why staying at home has been so difficult for a lot of people is because we miss that social interaction, being able to interact with other peers, because that's what's important. One of the things that's really important to us as human beings, and Finnis recognises this. And therefore, as we all live in groups and we all have to collaborate and work together, what we have to do is we have to look out for not just our own basic goods, but the basic goods of others. That's why that's one of the nine requirements, isn't it? That you must foster the common good of the community. By the common good of the community, Finnis means that a situation in which every individual is able to pursue the basic goods for themselves. So that you are, your actions are not stopping somebody else from pursuing the basic goods, they're actually helping them to pursue the basic goods for themselves. Because we each have that moral responsibility to ourselves and for our own behaviour. So we have, to, we have to pursue the basic goods in our own way. Now, if we are unable to participate in the basic goods, we're unable to pursue them, then we're not able to do good actions. Therefore, says Finnis, this is why having some rules and some authority is important. So, to achieve the best for the common good, Certain acts need to be achieved by the whole community. Certain things should be done by everybody. So it's not down to a small group of individuals to do uh, a thing, it's down to everybody. Look at the, at the recent protests, you know, it's in the news all the time about the Black Lives Matter protests. It is down to every one of us to stand up against racism. It is not just down to a few. Racism has to be stamped out by everybody or it'll never be stamped out at all. So we have to all stand up against racism. This isn't an act that can just be done by a few, it has to be done by everybody. And this is the principle that Finnis was getting at when he says everybody is responsible for making sure that the common good is fostered so that everybody can pursue the basic goods. The problem is that not everybody will act in that selfless way to put, sort of help others achieve the basic goods. People are innately selfish. We tend to look out for our own interests. And therefore, says Finnis, sometimes rules are important to ensure that the whole community can achieve the basic goods. Finnis says that certain rules create a society which is ordered in order for the basic goods to be achieved. 
Now we all know we've all played different games or you know participated in different sports where there are certain rules and without those rules we know that it would just be chaos. I watched on Netflix the other day a programme called The English Game. It's all about the development of football in the Victorian era. And the very early days when football was only around, only about for the kind of very privileged few, the kind of Eton College lot, then there weren't as many strict rules because, you know, they were always going to win and working men were not allowed to participate in the game in the same way. And you couldn't transfer players because then you could just buy the best team rather than being privileged enough to be able to afford three meals a day and therefore win everything. Without the changing of rules and introduction of kind of more, more rules to promote that, then the equality within football would never have been achieved. It's the same as any game. I'm sure you've sat with your families and played maybe Monopoly. If the rules weren't there, Monopoly would just be, well, it'd be a free-for-all and everybody would be putting houses on there, all their properties without paying for them. And it, the whole concept would fall apart. And Finnis says, look, society is very similar. We have to have certain rules in order to create an ordered society because it is only within an ordered society that the basic goods can be pursued. The most effective authority, says Finnis, is not kings or presidents. The most effective authority is the law. And therefore, Finnis concludes that the law is a morally necessary component of a developed society. Now, some laws actively serve the basic goods. Think about the law regarding not murdering. Well, as life is one of the basic goods, the rule to not murder people actively supports that. But the majority of laws aren't necessarily related to a, directly to a basic good. So think about speed limits, okay? Speed limits are not necessarily enforced for the basic good. They are there to create that ordered society. So therefore, the laws, the authors of the law need to create a legal system which supports the basic goods. It's only a morally good legal system, says Finnis, if, and only if, the laws that exist support the ordered society, which then support the common good, which then support the promotion of the basic goods. If there are laws which directly go against the basic goods, it is not a morally good set of laws. Now, Finnis argues also that not only can we accept that there should be laws, but once there are laws, we have to accept all of them. And his argument follows like this. I ought to pursue the basic goods. That's our number one, we all know, so I ought to pursue the basic goods. Society needs to coordinate in order to achieve the basic goods. The law is an effective way of coordinating society and therefore I must obey the law. So the proposition is that we have to pursue the basic goods. And the secondary proposition is this. Well, if we need to coordinate a society in order to produce the base to, to pursue the basic goods, then that's important. Therefore, we have to have a law which is an effective way of coordinating society. We must therefore obey the law. And Finnis says that that's why we have laws. We have laws to create this ordered society to help us pursue the basic goods. And that these laws therefore must be enforceable. And that's why Finnis says that sometimes there will be punishments for people who break the laws. The reason being that we have to have that sense of order in our society in order to be able to achieve the basic goods. The law is therefore justified to put into place uh, any sanctions for people that break that law. So this is why we need the law. Overall, it creates that order in society. It helps us to achieve the basic goods. And it shows us, says Finnis, the, the distinction between theoretical reason and practical reason. In theoretical reason, we have two ideas which may be equally important, but if they aren't in complete agreement, they are contradictory. Whereas practical reason says sometimes two things can coexist, even though they may not appear to, to correlate on the surface. To explain that perhaps a little bit more clearly, because that wasn't that clear. To explain it more clearly, put it like this. What should I do on a Saturday afternoon? Should I go to an art gallery? Should I help in a charity? I can't do both because they are both at exactly the same time. Does that mean one must be good and one must be bad? Well, according to theoretical reason, yes, it does. But Finnis says, according to practical reason, they can both be good actions. Which is why then we have the law. The law helps us to achieve the good actions through creating that order within society that we need in order to do that. So that is John Finnis's moral theory and his adaptation of natural law. We have basic goods to pursue. We can work these out through practical reason. They are applicable to all of us at all times. And the law creates an ordered society which helps us to achieve those basic goods. 
Learning and putting all those things into context alongside applying good examples will help you to write really good essays about John Finnis's adaptation of natural law. Looking for examples like, for example, the example of abortion, you know, what should a mother do in an abortion situation and applying the basic goods and the requirements of practical reason to it will be an integral part of showing that you understand the theory. It's not just that you've sat there and learned a list of seven and nine. And it's applying those theories which will get you the best marks in essays uh, and, and show the examiners, look, I don't just know this stuff, I really understand it. Thanks for joining me in my garage today and, uh, and thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time as we look perhaps at the criticisms of John Finnis.